On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're getting synchronized. Well, am I ever excited about today's session, synchronization. This is a subject that I've always taken a real special interest in. And I know this is just the true geek and engineer coming out of me, but you know, I think back to the days of locking up analog tape machines with SMPTE time code. Yeah, this whole business of synchronization has just been something that I've always really gotten into. Not just making it function and work, but coming up with accurate sync. I mean, that's what it's all about in the studio. You know, all of this hardware is only relatively useful until we can accurately synchronize it with our main computer system, right? So for today's session, I'm gonna take a few minutes and share exactly how I like to synchronize all of my hardware with my DAW. And we're gonna be working in Pro Tools today, but for the purpose of this session, you could be working in any sequencer. We could be working in Logic or Cubase or Reason, whatever the case is. You know, over the years and in my experience, I've seen a lot of different sync boxes come across my plate, from the most rudimentary ideas to some of the most complex, unbelievably complex systems out there. Well, today I'm gonna to be talking about a very specific sync box and one that I've come to rely on here in my studio. I'm talking about Interclock Systems Sync Gen 2. I have the LS version, which just means that it's a Euro rack configuration and it just fits right into my rail system. You know, they have a standalone version of this as well. This box is unbelievably awesome. Well, this little piece of hardware is paired with its own plugin. All I have to do to engage this in Pro Tools is create a stereo audio track and insert their own Sync Gen 2 plugin across that track. That's what it looks like. This particular piece of hardware requires two separate analog signals that feed into that in order for it to generate a sync. The Sync Gen plugin is the thing that's generating those tones. So in this example today, I'm using Sync Gen 2 to synchronize my Eurorack system, my virus synth, and a soft synth that I've got running inside of Pro Tools. We're hearing all three of those synths right now, and they're being driven by the arpeggiator in my Arturia. Check it. Yeah, the MIDI clock that the Sync Gen generates is way more accurate than what I feed directly out of Pro Tools. This extra step with this plug-in and driving these tones into this thing, through that conversion, this Sync Gen 2 creates a very accurate MIDI clock output. And that's what I end up feeding every single device in my whole studio. Initially, I acquired it just so I could drive my mini Eurorack system from my DAW, but the fact that it can output really accurate MIDI clock and DIN sync as well, that is just such a bonus when you've got so many pieces of hardware in the studio that can receive clock. It's so awesome to be able to hit play on Pro Tools and just have everything in the room perfectly synced and clocked, right? And what's really cool on the modular side is that this Sync Gen 2 also acts as a clock divider. It's got like nine outputs of different divisions of the clock. So when you're working on patches on the Euro system, so handy to be able to just grab those clock references and send them to different places, right? This system didn't become the powerhouse it is in my view until I added the Arturia. You know, a little mini keyboard that has everything that it has, it's sort of unreal that this thing's got gate out, it's got pitch control, it's got MIDI in and out. Yeah, this little controller becomes very powerful when you combine it with a little Eurorack rig like this. Well, thank you very much for sitting in on today's session, and I hope this inspires you to get synchronized.